there is Handy Sandy coming to you again from the subterranean craft room. Today's project, Easy Sew Pillow. Woohoo! You can uh, make the pillow plain or do an applique, and I'm going to show you how to do it both ways. And the best thing about this pillow is, well, actually, it's not really a pillow. It's a pillow cover, and when finished, it can cover and accommodate a standard size bed pillow. And uh, it's got an easy finish flap on the back, so that way, if the cover that way if the cover gets a little dirty or soiled, you can easily remove it to wash it. All right, stay tuned for the directions coming up right now. The most important thing that you need to do before you begin any project that involves fabric is make sure that you give it a quick iron. Oftentimes when you bring it home from the fabric store, it's going to have wrinkles, it's going to have creases where the fabric was folded. Who knows what happened to it while it made its way from the store to your house. I like to use this Rwanda iron. This is an older version. They sell updated ones. But it works really well. It's made in Germany. This one's 1700 watts. It's got a lot of power. It has a lot of holes on the shiny metallic ironing surface. And it's produces a lot of steam to get the job done quickly and efficiently. Rwanda iron, it's the best. We've got our piece of fabric here that we've ironed and cut 19 inches wide by 44 inches long. So uh, for this project, I don't know if I mentioned before, but a yard and a quarter should do the job. For this pillow, I chose the pattern for the applique to be Higgins Lake. So here's um, a cutout that I did of Higgins Lake and I've selected a contrasting fabric and I traced the Higgins Lake pattern on the back of it. So of course you know you want to flip the image over so it's wrong side facing you and trace around on the back of the fabric. And that way if you overlap or make mistakes with your pencil mark it's not going to show on the front. So after you've got that traced, cut it out. For the contrasting fabric that you're going to use for the applique, you know, depending on how big your fabric is, you probably won't need any more than a quarter to a half a yard. Just want to mention real quick, I don't know if anybody cares, but just to go off on a little storytelling tangent, which I so often do, ask my friends and family. Anyway, uh, love Higgins Lake. It's in northern Michigan. And the fortunate thing about living in Michigan, we do what everyone else does, point to where things are. Higgins Lake is about there. Beautiful, beautiful lake. We've been vacationing there every summer since, well, before I was born. So it's a lake that is near and dear to my heart. A lot of great memories. So why wouldn't I want to make a pillow with my favorite lake's image on the front? I've got my image lake image cut out and I'm going to show you how to applique on the front of the pillow. It's so easy you don't even have to sew it at first. You'll see. The heat bond uh, fusible stuff that you'll want to use comes in um, different packaging. This particular one that I'm going to use for this project, they, they sell it at Joann's by the yard. And it comes with these instructions that tell you how to do it and they also sell uh, heat bond or interfacing or whatever the heck this stuff is called. They sell it uh, in a package form too. Uh, this is the Ultra Hold. You don't need Ultra Hold for this project. It's just lightweight cotton fabric that we're ironing on. But this is what I use for the um, Gnome project. The directions say place rough side of wonder under against wrong side of fabric. Um, Press five to six seconds with hot, dry iron, so don't use any steam. And when you're cutting out, don't use your really good sewing scissors. Just use a regular sharp pair of scissors. Not scissors that you would use on fabric. That was kind of a nightmare. Uh, what happened was I was using this to um, <laughs> fuse the, the first layer of... Um, fuse and bond to the fabric and my iron overlapped and I got a little bit on the front. I've spent the past eight minutes trying to pick this off with scissors, but I think 
it'll come off. Uh, but anyway, that's a lesson on what not to do. Make sure that when you when you're ironing the uh, extra on that you have your your protective film on top, and then when it's all done being fused, you know this won't stick to your ironing board or your iron. But what I did, uh, I just put a scrap piece of fabric over this and melted it, and it warmed it up enough to either one stick to the scrap piece of fabric, or two melted enough so it wasn't sticking to the iron so I could scrape it off. But truth be told, you're not even going to notice that when the project's finished. So after you've ironed it, you cut it out, and then you pick away at the extra layer, and you peel that off, and what's left is a very fine layer of that plasticky fusible webbing. And we're going to iron this onto our pillow. But what you're going to want to do is make sure that it's centered, and I'll show you how to do that next. With this particular pillow, even though the, uh, the rough dimensions are 19 across by 44 long, you're going to want to put a uh, hem on each of the short ends first. So we're going to hem this short end, this 19 inch end, and this 19 inch end. And what we're going to do is fold it over a, fold it over a quarter of an inch and then fold it over again and then we're going to iron that and I'll show you the next step. So we folded over this fabric twice, ironed it, and sewed it. And the reason why you want to do that is to make sure that uh, it doesn't fray. If you don't fold it over twice and sew it, your fabric is going to come apart and start fraying. And that will not make for a good pillow. If you're making a plain, easy sew pillow, make sure that the, the right side is together. Uh, work with it to make sure that your dimensions are 19 by 19 and then you're going to sew on that side and then on this side and then turn it right side out and then you're done. That's your easy sew pillow. But we're going to do an iron-on applique. So I'm going to show you how to center this on the front. You want to do this before you sew the sides shut. Otherwise, you know, if you've sewed your sides, how on earth are you going to iron this on and then do the satin stitch applique around it? So we're going to do the iron on first and then the sides. So I think what I'm going to do, because I, I don't want to mark, put any marks on this fabric, since it's the right side that we're working with here, I think what I'm going to do is mark my center point with some pins. So I got my... I have my trusty little pin container here. I folded the fabric. I'm gonna just put this in ever so slightly because we're just marking the center point of this fold. I want to let you know on this fabric that I'm working with, I didn't have quite enough for 44 inches, so I did sew an extra piece on the end in case you're wondering what that was. But your pillow should begin whether you have to add scraps or not, your pillow dimension should be 44 by 19. What I talked about before, I roughly marked out the center of the fabric uh, from side to side and top to bottom. And I used pins and then I laid the uh, Higgins Lake applique on top of that. Uh, then I pinned it loosely from here to here, brought it over to the ironing board, gave it a good ironing. And now is permanently affixed to the fabric. Yay! One of the hardest parts is over with. I did also notice there's a bunch of shadows that's on the uh, earlier video. There's probably uh, shadows on it now. Oh yeah, look, uh, Shadow Bunny. I'm uh, still trying to get my lighting technique down. But, you know, hopefully things will get better as I go. Alright, now I'm going to show you how to do a satin stitch around the Higgins Lake. To jazz it up a little bit. Here's my trusty little sewing machine, a nice little Janome number. And what we're going to do here, we want to. Uh, I currently have white thread in here in the uh, the top and in the bobbin color. Uh, we're going to do a satin stitch like I talked about. So I think what I'm going to do is a nice turquoise color. So I have to change the top thread 
and the bottom thread to get to satin stitching. Here's another one of my handy sandy tips. I know it's uh, kind of primitive, but it works for me. I took this scrap block of wood and drove some nails in it. And uh, I keep my extra bobbins and extra thread on here while I'm working on other projects so it's not rolling all over the craft room and getting lost. And I've also separated all my threads by colors in these nice little clear shoe boxes. And somewhere on here, yes, I've taken the time to label it all. Blue, green, brown wine. We want to look for a bluish green, something that complements the blue Higgins Lake fabric color. So uh, what I've done here, sample stitch, I've got my uh, uh, colored thread in the bottom and in the top. And on this particular sewing machine, I made sure that I chose um, the zigzag. I don't know why it doesn't focus. Hang on. Uh, apparently this camera has an autofocus button that I forgot to press. Anyway, forget about all that. I <laughs> uh, did a sat satin stitch uh, practice run on some scrap fabric. Colored thread in the bobbin. Colored thread in the top. This particular Genome, non-sponsored, sewing machine I've set at uh, a C, which is a, a zigzag stitch. And my length, I've got a, a, just a notch above zero. Uh, and my width, I have it a four. So the length is at a zero, so uh, the zigzags are going to be closer together. And the width four determines how long, uh, from top to bottom, your zigzag stitch is. Sewing people probably already know this, but yeah, I'm all about the content. Alrighty, what I've done now is taken the time to roll up the sides, the extra uh, yardage of the pillow. And this is the first time I've used these handy dandy sewing clips. Well, actually the second time I do use these in my um, memo board that I made uh, one video back. But anyway, rolled up the fabric using these clips to keep it out of the way. Because, of course, as I sew, I'm going to be turning things and I don't want to uh, take the chance of getting all that extra yardage sewn to itself. Oh, that would be a disaster. A sewing Titanic. Too soon, maybe? I don't, I don't know. I don't know if you can see here, but what we're going to do is satin stitch right on top of the fabric. At first, uh, I failed miserably because I thought that you would want to uh, catch the fabric of the applique and then the fabric of the pillow. Oh, but no, no, that is wrong, according to a wise old sewing lady that I was talking to up north. You're going to want to keep your satin stitch right on the border of the blue fabric. Wish me luck. This is what we have so far and I'm pleased to say it's going great, thank goodness. I've noticed uh, I'm doing three things. Keeping this flat, making sure that I feed it slowly, and apparently not breathing. Periodically I'm checking the bobbin to make sure that I have enough thread. Ooh, and I've noticed that I'm running out. But I just wanted to let you know that my confidence level is so high right now. Look, Mom, one hand! I had to take a quick break there to put more thread on the bobbin. When you're starting, again, make sure that you're overlapping where you began uh, before you ran out. Uh, so overlap on your existing stuff just so you... Uh, don't come unwound or your thread doesn't come un undone, unwound. Hmm. Ta-da, finished product. Okay, so uh, it went a lot easier than I remember it going the first time I attempted, but you know, with everything, practice makes perfect. Nice, clean, crisp lines. Actually, it does hide a, a little bit of imperfections. All we have to do is unclip the side fabrics uh, turn it inside out and then sew the two side seams and then I'll show you how to put the pillow in. Your project may or may not need to be ironed at this point. If it does, just hit it real quick because you don't want any uh, creases in there. And what we're going to do is fold the two flaps over and fiddle with it a little bit so it measures 19 by 19. 19 by 19. For me, the easiest thing to do is lay out a yardstick on my work table here and just, uh, of 
course, line it up, 1919. A couple important things here. When you are uh, folding in your flaps here, I know flaps doesn't sound good, but I don't know what else to call it. Um, make sure that your applique is centered in the middle. So I'm lucky enough where uh, my Higgins Lake is darker, so I have six inches on one side to the end and six inches on um, the other side. So make sure that everything's centered in the middle of your, your flaps are centered. And then, of course, make sure that your final folded dimensions are 19 at the top and 19 at the bottom. And now, to the sewing machine. Um, actually, I'm going to pin this first so nothing moves around. And then to the sewing machine. Remember, we made these extra lengths here and hemmed them because the final pillow, uh, you're not going to need to finish off a seam because there's going to be like a pocket to stuff it in. So be extra careful, you know, like I said before, to pin everything, not just the size, but the middle. So when you sew, those, those flaps don't move around. We got the sewing done. The thing that makes this pillow so easy to do, uh, first of all, you don't have to do a finished edge to stuff it. It takes a standard pillow. There's only four seams that you need to sew. The top and bottom of the 44 inch length, and then you do your um, applique if you want to, and then you sew the two sides. So two bottoms, two tops. That's just four seams that you need to do. And now, if my calculations are correct, and if I'm in center and in focus, Oh, it's a jumbled mess right now, but wait, wait for it. Da 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 da. Da da da. Uh oh, the corners. Wait for it. Wait for it. Ta da! Why is it weird over here? Oh, because it's just a little. Ta da! Let me go get the pillow. It's so easy to applique. Well, oh, oh, it's so easy to applique. All right, so anyway, um, standard, standard bed pillow. I hope I'm not too much in the frame here. Of course, make sure that you're all the way to the end. Oh, it looks like it's not going to fit, but it will. Trust me. Oh, think of the possibilities. Um, when I first did the Higgins Lake pillow, of course, I had to do um, matching Houghton Lake. Didn't want Houghton Lake to feel left out. Also, another lake up north. You could do the shape of your state. So wouldn't that be nice? I could do a Higgins Lake and Houghton Lake and a Michigan. Right, see, and the back, uh, because those two, two flaps overlap, it hides the pillow quite nicely, so you don't have to finish it off. And, of course, you're going to take the time to center it and stuff. And there we go, the finished product. Just have to uh, move around the pillow a little bit, but ta-da, it worked, and it looks great, and it's centered. I love it. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, and uh, please subscribe to my channel, and if you like it, Give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.